Please rise as you are able for our call to worship. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light this peace candle in joyful anticipation of welcoming Christ's coming. Um, How long God, our shepherd, you chose an humble woman to bring your Messiah into the world, one who will bring us security, joy, and peace. We, God's people, sing with Mary, the mighty one has done great things for thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please remain as you are for our opening song. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome this morning on this last of the Advent Sundays and the last Sunday before Christmas. And it's tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Can you believe that? I mean, it has sneaked right up on us. I don't know how, but it just always does. It sneaks right up on me every time. But I love it. I love this time of year. And I'm so glad to see you all here in time of worship glad that you have chosen in this crazy busyness of our world to come to this place and if nothing else to take a moment to just breathe and just stop all the madness and just be in worship with each other and love one another we are in community amen okay i, I shouldn't be preaching now i'll hold that till later 
So let me just say welcome. If this is your first time with us, would you wave at me so I can wave back? All right, and we want to say welcome to all of you who are joining us online. For those of you who haven't done so yet, check in on social media and let people know that it's time for worship and they can join us online and watch live with us as well as it'll be recorded. They can watch it later if you want. We do want to say welcome to you who are joining us online today. We know we have people from all over the world that visit with us every single Sunday. And we love it when you check in to let us know who you are and where you're from. And we just want to say welcome. We hope that you enjoy this worship service with us today. And as always, we're delighted for all of you who are so faithful to this place of worship. And so I invite you now to just pass the peace and welcome one another. Please remain standing for this morning's sacred readings. The first reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 20, the message version. We don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside. And what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone a new life virgins. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking of Christ himself now. Become friends with God, who is already a friend with you. The second reading comes from Bishop Stephen Charleston, retired Episcopal. Why are we compassionate? Why do we care? There are a lot of deep psychological and religious reasons, but I think one simple factor is our ability to remember. Empathy is memory. When we see someone engaged in a struggle, we cannot help but recall when we were in a very similar place. We remember our fear, our confusion, our vulnerability. Memory closes the distance between the mind and the heart. It time travels us to our own past. It is our unspoken but universal language, the shared story of the human condition. We care for one another because we have been through so many of the same battles. We are family, not only in memory, but in feeling. Hear what the Spirit says today.
Amen. You may be seated. Well, I think most of you have been here throughout this whole Advent series, but just in case you have forgotten, we're looking at Christmas through the classics, as in classic movies, some a little more classic than others. Some are traditional, some are a little untraditional. Uh, we started out with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, if you recall. Then we did the Santa Claus. And then we did last week Trading Places, which became a very good Christmas movie. And today we're doing, I guess, my favorite of the storylines, the plot lines, and has been for a long time because as an English major, Charles Dickens has been my, one of my favorite authors, if not the most favorite author of all times. And we're doing A Christmas Carol. And so I want to invite you, uh, if you're online looking, stay with us. You're going to go offline for just a minute or two while we show a clip. We want to make sure we do copyright uh, correctly. But I invite you and the audience to take just a moment to look at your screens. Now, most of us know the plot, but just in case you're a little rusty, let me tell you a little bit about it. We have the main character, Ebenezer Scrooge. He's a businessman, and he's lost his business partner, and along with that, he lost a lot of his business. But he's still a wealthy, wealthy, wealthy old man. Now, I said he was an old man. He's a miser. He does not like to spend money. He keeps all of his money to himself. He's very unhappy with life. He's very unhappy with everyone around him. And then as he's living alone into himself, he gets a visitor, the ghost of his former business partner, who tells him that he's going to have three more visitors. He's going to have the visit from a ghost of Christmas past. Anybody had a ghost of Christmas past come to you? Or just a ghost of past come to you? And then the ghost of Christmas present. And then the ghost of Christmas future. And as each ghost comes to visit, he is reminded of a different time in his life. And as we notice, his ghost of Christmas past takes him to a place that his life was much better. His life was much happier. His life was much different than it is now. His attitude was a lot different, and he liked to make merry. Time when he wasn't so self-absorbed, and a time when he wasn't so lost and so cruel and so crotchety. Yes, crotchety. <laughs> you, you, you know some crotchety folks, don't you? Uh, there's someone that's in one of our services who told me recently, I'm just a crotchety old man. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, you're our crotchety old man, so I guess you'll have to stay. <laughs> Scrooge sees his life flash before his eyes, literally through the visits of these three ghosts. And it finally ends up with him at a lonely old rusty dusty graveyard and he sees his name on a tombstone and he sees that it's unkept and he's forgotten and nobody knows nobody cares he's all alone even in death and then when he wakes up he realizes that it was just a dream. Or was it? I ask you. When he wakes up, he realizes that he really is still alive and that he has this epiphany. Imagine that. He has an epiphany, an aha moment to say, wait a minute, if I'm still alive... I can become that person that I need to be. Now, he can't go back and relive all of those years. He can't go back to his childhood. You know, he lost his girl. Remember that? He lost all sorts of things. He had lost his family. And now he's lost his business partner. 
And now he's about to lose his only loyal worker, probably Mr. Bob Cratchit wouldn't have hung on much longer if he'd have been able to find another job because his working conditions were so cruel. But he realizes that he's alive. He's not just existing anymore, that he really is alive. But in that aha moment, he has to make a choice. He can either continue the way he's going, which is the easy route, isn't it? At least we think we, it is. We think it's easy to just continue down that rough road because it's familiar. At least we know the problems that we're having. We know the problems ahead. We know the detours. We know how to get back on track. We know where the off-ramps are and the on-ramps are. <laughs> but he's hit rock bottom and he can make a change for the better. He can make a change for the better. And I love this part of the story because it's a story of salvation. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of I've been horrible, but I can turn my life around and be a good person. But you see, it started inside of him. It wasn't just making up his mind what others were going to do or not do. It was what changed inside of him for him not just for everybody else it wasn't just about doing something for everybody else it had to be a change to his deepest core of who he was to say I don't want to be that person anymore I don't want to think the way I've been thinking anymore I don't want to do the things I've been doing anymore and I don't want to be who I have been and now comes the hard part I'm going to change right now. I'm going to change in this moment. I am going to have a salvation moment. I am going to have my epiphany, and I will turn my life around with or without anybody else's help. Whew. That'll work. Brother Romans sent me a, a text this week, and he said, I'm determined to stay on the right track with God. Amen. I thought, what a powerful yeah. statement. That was powerful for me. I needed to hear that. You ministered to me. Right. He was like, I, I'm having my devotions. And he sent me one of his devotions. Thank you for that. That blessed me too. And I thought, wow, I'm determined to stay on the right track, to keep my spiritual life going in the right direction. What a powerful statement. And you know, he didn't commit that to me until he had committed it to himself. We all have an aha moment. We all have that salvation moment when we have to decide from our deepest soul, our deepest core, are we going to change? He realizes, though, that life is not just about him. It's about helping others. His life can, can be changed. But how can he really be changed if it's just him? He has to prove it to everyone else. How can he not help others who need help? How can he not use the means he has to help those who don't have the means? How can he not be the voice who have no, for those who have no voice? How can he not be the Santa for the giftless? How can he not be the catalyst for change? in others, in his business dealings, in his family dealings, in his friend dealings, in his employee dealings, everything has to change. Because you see, when that change comes inside of us, everything changes. Everything changes. Because our whole outlook on life changes. The way we think changes. You know, in our first reading today, the Apostle Paul makes several points. And he says that when we meet Jesus, when we truly see Jesus, not the one that's been conjured up for us, not just the ones that's been preached to us, not just the one we read about in the Scriptures, but when we truly meet Jesus, that hits our core, that hits our very soul. 
when you meet Jesus for who Jesus really is, you are changed. And you, are, you can never unlearn that. You can never unexperience it. Because once you have met that one, when you've come in touch with God, when you've come in touch with the Holy Spirit that only can touch us in our deepest core that goes right to the root of who we are and how we think, you are never, ever, ever the same. We are never, ever the same. And we have a moment. Paul says we have a fresh start. And I want to tell you something else. Now, I was taught that you have a salvation moment, and I can take you to the altar at Cleman Street Church of God if that building is still standing in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And I can take you, if it's still there, there was an old altar, and I went down and knelt on the Wednesday night before Thursday Thanksgiving when I was five years old, and I told Jesus, I want you to live in my heart. I want you to be the guide of my life for the rest of my life. And I didn't know all the stuff I know now, but I know something changed because from that time on, I realized that I had to consult with Jesus about every decision. I had to consult with Jesus about every day and how every day is going to turn out. Have I always made the right choices? Nope. Have I prayed about a lot of them and Jesus showed me one way and I did just the opposite? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've told people most of my sinful life is since I gave my heart to Jesus. Well, I was only five, for heaven's sake. I've had a lot of years to make up, right? It doesn't mean we're going to live perfect lives. It doesn't mean we're going to make perfect decisions all the time. It doesn't mean I'm even going to have the right attitude sometimes. There have been a few times I've had to go back and say, I am so sorry for my attitude. I am so sorry for the choices that I've made that have landed me where I am. But here's what I want to tell you. That fresh start was not just about the time I was five years old kneeling in an altar. It was about many epiphanies through the years. It was about the process of learning who Jesus really is because I had to go through a lot of muck of what had been taught me. And a lot of it was true, don't get me wrong, but you have to start sorting out what was real for you, what was real about the real Jesus, the real Spirit of God, and change it inside of yourself so that then you could go out and change everyone else around you and be better towards anyone else around you and make their lives better. I said a while ago, some of us have been visited by a ghost of the past. And in his situation, he found his life much better when he was younger. Some of us didn't have that. Some of you did not have a very good childhood. Some of you did not have a wonderful place to look back to. And if that's the case, don't go back there. Don't go back there. In fact, someone was saying something to me, a family member I was talking to yesterday, and she started telling me about another family member that neither one of us particularly care for. <laughs> I will treat that family member just as nice, and if they were here, I would love them, hug them, and all of that. I just don't want to be close friends with that person. I just don't. I don't think she's a very nice person. She claims to be, but that's just her story. Nobody else seems to think that. <laughs> but she's unanimous in that. But I saw myself in that conversation having to back off and not contribute. You know why? Because it takes me back to a very dark place in my own life. One of those past places with that person <laughs> that I was very close to for many years. And it was a very dark time in my life. And every time I revisit that ghost, it takes me to a very bad place. And it depresses me. And it makes me angry. And it makes me realize how much of my childhood I missed because of that person. 
And I'm not here to, to make you feel bad. I'm here to tell you this. At some point, I've learned through the years, when I see myself going down that road and revisiting that ghost of past, to say, whoa, stop. <laughs> stop right there. Right. I've visited that many times before. I already know where that goes. I already know the end of that story. Not going there today. Not going there today. So you know what I did on the conversation? I made a joke out of something. We laughed it off and we changed the subject. You mean we can change it? Well, the Apostle Paul says we get a fresh new start when we meet Jesus. And I've had to meet Jesus over and over and over again. It wasn't just that one time when I was five years. It's been over and over. It is a process. And it's okay that we keep, we keep meeting Jesus. Amen. Where Jesus meets us where we are. Amen. Right where we are. And it's okay. Because we have then been changed. We start looking at other people differently. If we start having the heart of Jesus in us, then we start looking, even at that person that brought much harm to me through those years. I start, you know, let, let me tell you something else that happened on that same conversation. The person said something else later in the conversation about that person. And that person had done something really nice for her. And she just kind of, you know, blazed right over that. And I said, hold up, hold up, wait just a minute. Did you just tell me that that person did something really nice for you? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, we have to give her some credit then, don't we? <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, there was a time I wouldn't have given her any credit for anything. But because the Spirit of Jesus has given me a fresh start, I can start saying, there's something inside that woman that's very painful. That she acts the way she acts and does the things she does. She is capable of good if she just wants to. If she just have that one aha moment. If she just have that process of meeting Jesus one more time and letting Jesus give her another fresh start. We've all been given it. And because we're in relationship with God, we've been changed but then it helps us to be the catalyst for change in those around us. Why do I love this season so much? I want everybody to have something for Christmas. I would buy every single one of you a gift if I had money, 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 money. <laughs> so remember that when you look at the budget. <laughs> That's a joke. We're doing real good. Here's the thing, in our second reading, I love Bishop Stephen Charleston. He writes something, in, in fact, if you follow him on Facebook, you can, he writes something new every day. And it's always relevant and it always touches my heart. It's just a little devotion like that one while ago. And he reminds us that we have been the person in need. That memory and empathy are the same. Scrooge had memory and empathy, you see, when he looked back and realized that what was happening with Tiny Tim and what was happening at the Cratchit household, he had been through similar situations and some were real and some were dreamed, but he had experienced enough of it to know that that memory helped him to have empathy for what others were going through. Sometimes we've been the Bob Cratchit, sometimes we've been Tiny Tim, and sometimes we've been all the different characters in that story. But it reminds him, and it reminds us, that when we identify with these people, we can empathize with them because we have been through, as he says, so many of the same battles. Let's take just another look at Scrooge for a, another minute online so we'll go offline just for a second well a minute so come back salvation moment that redemption moment to, to change to have a new fresh start ourselves 
we also have the opportunity to make the lives of those around us better. That's our challenge, isn't it? Let it be said of us just as it was for Mr. Scrooge. That's our challenge. Will you take it? You may be seated. Good morning. My name is Jenny Nichols. I am here this morning to bring you your weekly announcements. How many of you have one of those little Ralph's loyalty cards on your keychain or a smile or shop at smileamazon.com? Both of these organizations give back to Founders MCC when you shop with them. To date, we have earned over $500, $500 with Smile Amazon Rewards. And if you use your Ralph's card, please check out the announcement in our bulletin today and choose Founders as your Community Rewards recipient. If you already do that, there's a new code number that you need to log into again in order to continue um, having donations made, in, made to Founders. If you don't have a Ralph's Reward card, you can easily sign up for one on their website. There's a basket and a box in front of the choir loft, and those are to collect your donations of blankets, scarves, and warm, fuzzy winter wear for those that are less fortunate. We'll be giving the hats and scarves to those in need beginning on our Christmas Day service, and the blankets will be getting collected for the next two weeks. So you still have time to bring stuff tomorrow evening or next week, and I know that the recipients will be grateful for your gifts. Speaking of Christmas and Christmas Eve, please mark your calendars for tomorrow night's service. Our Spanish language service begins at 8 p.m., and the English candlelight service starts at 10.30. Please feel free to invite your friends, your family, 
and those people that you pass on the street who, would like, who you would like to have to share worship with. Jesus is the reason for this season, so let's all be Jesusly and share this amazing story with those in our lives. <clears throat> then again, remember that on Christmas Day, we'll be opening our hearts our ho- and our hospitality and our kitchen to the LGBT youth and others in the Los Angeles area who may not have anywhere to go for, this day, for that day. We're still welcoming your support, however you can donate, whether that's by bringing food, by making a cash donation, by showing up to help serve, help clean. We, we will accept all of it. Sign-up sheets should be available outside the church after worship. <clears throat> and then this coming Saturday evening at 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m. In the, in the theater downstairs, We'll be showing this play, Stan D. Playwright Christopher Aguilar, who is in our sanctuary in our congregation this morning, wrote the play based on his personal experience as a trans gender fluid person living daily with bipolar disease, bipolar disorder, and how his Filipino American family helped him navigate those struggles. There's a, there's a suggested admission of $10, but no one will be turned away for lack of funds. And finally, we have one more opportunity to be of service. It's not too late to donate the unwrapped toy for our annual toy drive that supports our Tijuana orphanages. As you can see, the tree is filling up, the bag is filling up, but we will be taking donations through January 6th. So, Let's fill Santa's bag to overflowing and give to those who have not much more than hope. And as we move today into our offering, our offering moment, today we'll be taking a second offering to support our Benevolence Fund. And now I ask that you indulge me for just a moment with our call to offering. It was two days before Christmas and all through this place, God's grace is abundant. Just look at each face. Go ahead, look, each face. Abundant grace, abundant joy, it's all there. This year, what a blessing. New pastor, new faith. Great worship, great focus. Spirit certainly flows from this space. Your gifts, oh how steadfast, whether in thought, word, or deed. Always appreciated to meet all our needs. As the ushers come forward, generosity prevails. Gratefully, we we receive. God's grace never fails. Before preparing God's table, I would just like to say, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good day.
God of all good things new, this morning as we draw closer to the blessed birth, we remember Mary and how your blessings come to the world in the most unexpected ways and often through the most unprepared people. Give us eyes this day to see the wealth of ways you have blessed us and the opportunities you have placed before us to be an unexpected blessing to others. Use our time, talents, and tithes we bring to you this morning to bless those who need the good news the most. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who gave in love all there was to give for us. Amen. Amen. Therefore, with a grateful heart, we say, may the light and love of God shine upon you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts with resounding joy. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God, for God is good. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a good, right, and joyful thing to give you thanks, most holy and merciful God. You're so close to us that Jesus, your Son, born of our blessed Mother Mary, becomes one of us as our Emmanuel, our God, with us. And he is so much like us that we may not even recognize him when he passes among us. May we truly discover him in the poor and in the needy, and even in ourselves, in our own weaknesses, so that he may lead us to you, our loving parent. And so we wait with yearning the birth of your Son among us. Prepare us to receive him when he comes in his own amazing form. Amen. And even though we hoped he would come with great power, he comes in poverty and humility. Even though we may look for him in distant places, open our eyes to see him right here next to us. And although we expected extraordinary signs, help us to discover him in the simplicity of all people and everyday life. Accustom us to Jesus' ways, that he may change our lives and conform us to your divine will, because he is our Lord and Savior for all time. And now let us take a moment of silence and give God, to th give God thanks for the blessings received and to pray for those in need. <clears throat> for these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, we pray to God as we sing together a prayer in the spirit of the way Jesus taught us to pray.
Please be seated. We remember Jesus Christ, who invites all who are thirsty to come and be fed, who earnestly prayed for all of us, even in the face of betrayal and crucifixion, who calls us to break bread together, to love one another, and to include all those who des desire to share in this great table fellowship. And we remember on that night, you took the bread, you blessed it, and you broke it. And you said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. And after the meal, in a like manner, you took the cup and said, take, drink, for this is the cup of forgiveness given for you and for all. Take and drink, all of you, for this is my blood, my life. This is my covenant with you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? God of all power, just as the spirit of life embodied Jesus in the tomb, so now breathe your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine, that they may be for us the life of Christ. May we be empowered to make that life visible through our actions of love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At Founders MCC, as with all MCCs around the world, this is an open table. You need not belong to this church or any church to participate fully in this feast. We have both regular and gluten-free wafers if you need. Just let your server know. And if you prefer to receive communion with no human intervention, please know we have set aside sacred elements to our left, your right, where you can be at one with God. All are welcome and invited to this table of love, mercy, and freedom wherever you are on your life or spiritual journey. Come as the ushers guide you, the feast is ready, and God invites us to join the, in the feast. Will the acolytes and servers please come forward?
we are so glad that you chose to worship here today, to be in this community of faith. Mm -hmm. and we hope that you enjoyed worship and that you will make this home if it's not mm -hmm. home already. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song? Amen to that. Yeah. Don't forget that tomorrow night is our um, two services, 8 o'clock and 1030. Be with us. You're in for some surprises. There's a great blessing in store for us. And then on uh, Tuesday, on Christmas Day, 11 to 3, uh, time of Christmas carols downstairs and lots of food. And uh, you're still welcome to bring food. You're still welcome to come and eat with us, whether you have food or not. Uh, we will have some food. And uh, don't forget that Saturday night at 7.30 is the play downstairs in the Black Box Theater. And we're just delighted, Chris, thank you for bringing this play to us. I think at this time of year, so many people are struggling. And this is a wonderful time for us to be together once again. Also, I want to tell you, just before you're dismissed, um, I, I always like to give you my own Christmas card. And so before you leave today or as you leave, you will see a little bag on either side of the doors uh, so please uh, reach in the bag and take a, a little card from me. It's just my little gift to you to say thank you for all that you are and who you are and how much you all mean to me. And even if you're a couple, even if you're a couple, each person, there's one for each person, okay? So take, take it, or if you're a multi or poly or whatever you are, there's one for each of us, in other words. Yes. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this time we've had together in this place. Thank you that when we know you for ourselves, it touches us to our deepest core, to our very soul, and saves us over and over and over again. God, let us continue to meet you. Let us continue to make changes in our lives for the better and allow you to come in and let your spirit wash away those things that need to go away and help us to make better choices for ourselves as we move through life. We ask these things in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 Shake hands and be friendly.